class 9 good morning everyone so students we are going to continue with the same topic that is exercise of science chapter 2 is matter around us pure okay in the last class we completed few question and answers and today we are going to continue further okay so let us begin with question number 7. In the last class we have completed till question number 6. And the last question was, how will you separate a mixture containing kerosene and petrol? Yes or no? This was our last question. That was question number 6. And today we are going to continue with question number 7. Okay, so let's move towards the question and answers. So students now question number 7. Name the technique to separate number 1 butter from curd, salt from sea water and number 3 camphor from salt. Okay. The answer is number 1 butter can be separated from curd by centrifugation. This is the method by which you can separate butter from curd. What is the method? It is centrifugation. I told you what is centrifugation? The rapidly spinning. Yes or no? When you spin rapidly, that process is called as centrifugation. It separates the butter from the curd. Okay. Then number two, salt can be separated from sea water by the method of evaporation. This is the technique through which you can separate salt from sea water. Okay, then number three, camphor can be separated from salt by sublimation. What is the process through which the camphor can be separated? It is sublimation. Sublimation is the process in which the solid is directly exchanged to gas or a gas is directly exchanged into solid state. Okay, so these are the following methods through which you can separate the different components. Okay. Now students, question number 8. What type of mixtures are separated by the technique of crystallization? By the process of crystallization, what type of mixtures you can separate? Okay. The answer is, by the technique of crystallization, pure solids are separated from impurities. You can separate pure solids. Okay. By the method of crystallization, you can separate pure solids from the impurities. For example, salt obtained from sea is separated from impurities. Okay? Then crystal of alum, the fitkari that you use to clean water, that is called as alum. Okay? Are separated from impure samples. Okay? By the process of crystallization, you can separate these impurities. Understood? I will repeat the answer again. By the technique of crystallization, pure solids are separated from impurities. You can separate pure solids by the process of crystallization. For example, salt obtained from the sea is separated from impurities. Crystals of alum, that is fitkari, are separated from impure samples. Understood? Now students, question number 9. Classify the following as chemical or physical changes. You have to classify the following into chemical and physical changes. What is chemical and physical change? In physical change, the components do not change their physical state. They remain as they are, as it is, okay? And in chemical change, they form a new compound or new substance in chemical change. So, you have to classify the following into chemical or physical changes. Okay. Number one is cutting of trees, melting of butter in a pan, rusting of almira, boiling of water from steam, passing of electric current through water and the water breaking down into hydrogen and oxygen gases, dissolving common salt in water, making a fruit salad with raw fruits and burning of paper and wood. So what are the changes that you can classify okay so students the answer is cutting of trees it
it is a physical change that means there is no change in this compound okay when you cut a tree it is a physical change okay that means you are cutting the tree okay then melting of butter in a pan that is also a physical change from semi solid it turns into liquid physical change okay then rusting of almira that is a chemical change okay then boiling of water from steam boiling of water to form steam that is a physical change that means liquid is turned into gas then passing of electric current through water and water breaking down into hydrogen and oxygen gas it is a chemical change why because it is forming a new compound yes or no hydrogen and oxygen that is why it is a chemical change then dissolving common salt in water it is a physical change common salt is in solid form and when you dissolve it it can dissolve into the liquid completely and it turns into liquid only yes or no then making a fruit salad with raw fruits it is a physical change because there is no new substance formed so it is a physical change then burning of paper and wood it is a chemical change if you burn paper and wood it turned into ashes or it turned into smoke so it is a physical or oh sorry it is a chemical change okay so students now question number 10 Which separation techniques will you apply for the separation of the following? Which separation techniques will you apply for the separation of the following? Okay, number one, it is sodium chloride from its solution in water. B, ammonium chloride from a mixture containing sodium chloride and ammonium chloride. C, small pieces of metal in the engine oil of a car d different pigments from an extract of flower petals e butter from curd f oil from water g tea leaves from tea h iron pins from sand i wheat grains from husk j fine mud particles suspended in water so what are the different techniques through which you you will separate okay you will use you will apply for the separation so students the answer is to separate sodium chloride from its solution in water you will use the technique evaporation okay by the technique of evaporation you can separate sodium chloride from from its solution in water the answer is evaporation okay then b ammonium chloride from a mixture containing sodium chloride and ammonium chloride the process is sublimation by the technique of sublimation you can separate ammonium chloride from a mixture that contains sodium chloride and ammonium chloride okay from the mixture of sodium chloride and ammonium chloride you can separate ammonium chloride by the process of sublimation either it will get converted into solid or it will get converted into the gaseous form because sublimation is the process where solid is directly converted into gas and gas is converted into solid okay then c small pieces of metal in the engine oil of a car how can you separate the small pieces of matter metal in the engine oil of a car you will use the process of centrifugation or filtration or decantation by the process of centrifugation filtration or decantation you can separate small pieces of metal in the engine oil of a car okay then different pigments from an extract of flower petals how can you separate different pigments from an extract of flower petals it is a chromatography what is the chromatography process it is a process through which you can separate the pigments from a substance yes or no the color pigments from a substance so the process is chromatography then e butter from curd you can use the process that is centrifugation okay f oil from water how will you separate oil from water by using separating funnel by using separating funnel you can separate 
all from water then tea leaves from tea by the process of filtration you can separate tea leaves from tea iron pits from sand by the process of magnetic separation because iron is sep iron can be the magnet can attract iron yes or no if you use magnetic separation the magnet will attract the iron from the sand and hence the magnet can be separated from the sand okay then wheat grains from husk by the process of winnowing you can separate wheat grains from husk the process is winnowing okay then fine mud particles suspended in water fine mud particles suspended in water can be separated by the process of centrifugation okay so students now question number 11 write the steps you would use to make tea use the word solution solvent solute dissolve soluble insoluble filtrate and residue i repeat the question again write the steps you would use for making tea for making tea you have to use the steps by and the words you have to use are solution solvent solute dissolve soluble insoluble filtrate and residue by using these words you have to mention the steps for preparing tea okay so the the answer is the steps used for making tea are first water is taken as a solvent in the saucer pan you will take water as the solvent that means water to be taken in larger amount as the solvent in a saucer pan number 2 this water that is solvent is allowed to boil okay the water that you take in the saucer pan is allowed to boil that is solvent then during heating milk and tea leaves are added to the solvent as solutes milk and tea leaves will be the solute because they are going to get mixed into the water that is the solvent that is why this tea and tea leaves and milk are called as solvent okay and later they form a solution okay then the solution is poured through a strainer the solution is poured through a strainer that means it is filtered the insoluble part of the solution remains on the strainer as the residue the remaining part that means the tea leaves will remain on the strainer as the residue that means the left over part that is residue the tea leaves are the residue okay then sugar is added to the filtrate filtrate means the tea that you have filtered into the cup you have filtered into the strainer that is the filtrate okay the tea is the filtrate the solution of the tea after filtration is called as filtrate okay which which dissolves in the filtrate okay sugar is added to the filtrate which dissolve in the filtrate that means you will add sugar in it the resulting solution is the required tea and the resulting solution is the required tea okay i will repeat the answer once again the steps used for making tea are first water is taken as a solvent in a saucer pan this water solvent is allowed to boil during heating milk and tea leaves are added to the solvent as solutes they form a solution then the solution is poured through a strainer the insoluble part of the solution remain on the strainer as residue sugar is added to the filtrate which dissolves in the filtrate the resulting solution is the required tea okay so students now question number 12 Pragya tested the solubility of four different substances at different temperatures and collected the data as given below. Results are given in the following table as gram of substances dissolved in 100 gram of water to form a saturated solution. Here Pragya has tested four different substances okay to check the solubility in at the different given temperatures okay the temperatures are given that is 
393 Kelvin, 313 Kelvin, 333 Kelvin and 353 Kelvin. These are the different temperatures that is given and she has tested the four, sub the four substances that is uh, potassium nitrate, sodium chloride, potassium chloride and ammonium chloride. Okay, these are the different substances that she have tested that to check the solubility in the 100 gram of water. Okay, to form a saturated solution. Understood? She has taken these four substances to check the solubility in 100 gram of water to form a saturated solution. Okay, so what is the answer of the question? So students, number, number A. What mass of potassium nitrate would be needed to produce a saturated solution of potassium nitrate in 50 gram of water at 313 Kelvin? Did you understand? What mass of potassium nitrate, that means how much potassium nitrate would be needed to produce a saturated solution of potassium nitrate in 50 gram of water. Okay, if she add how much potassium nitrate she would be needed to make a saturated solution in 50 gram of water at 313 Kelvin. That means the temperature is 313 Kelvin. In this temperature, how much potassium nitrate should, how much potassium nitrate she needs to make a saturated solution in 50 gram of water. Okay, so the answer is at 313 Kelvin, 62 gram of potassium nitrate that is KNO3. KNO3 is the chemical formula of potassium nitrate. Okay, is dissolved in 100 gram of water. Understood? In, in 100 gram of water, 62 gram of potassium nitrate is needed, is dissolved. So, 100 gram of water gives 62 gram of potassium nitrate. That means in 100 gram of water, 62 gram of potassium nitrate is dissolved. So, to produce a saturated solution of potassium nitrate in 50 gram of water, we need 50 gram of water is equal to 62 divided by 100 into 15. Okay. That means in 100 gram of water, if 62 gram of potassium nitrate can be dissolved, then in 50 gram of water, 62 divided by 100 into 50. So the answer is 31 gram of potassium nitrate can be dissolved in 50 gram of water at 313 Kelvin to form a saturated solution. Understood? To form, to, to form a saturated solution in 50 gram of water at 313 Kelvin, 31 gram of potassium nitrate is needed. Understood? Now, number B. Pragya makes a saturated solution of potassium chloride in water at 353 Kelvin and leaves the solution to cool at room temperature. What would she observe at the solution? Cool. Explain. When Pragya makes a saturated solution of potassium chloride in water at 353 Kelvin. Okay. When she... When she makes a saturated solution of potassium chloride in water at 353 Kelvin, that means this is the temperature, 353 Kelvin at this temperature, if she makes a saturated solution of potassium chloride in water and leaves the solution to cool at room temperature, and she leaves the solution to cool at room temperature, what would she observe? The solution as the solution cool, that means what is the physical change in the solution? What will she observe? The answer is some soluble potassium chloride will separate out in the form of crystal at room temperature because the solubility of potassium chloride will decrease with decrease in the temperature. When she leaves the solution in the room temperature, it will form crystal. Okay, because the temperature of the potassium chloride is high. When it cools down, it will form some crystals. Okay, it will form some crystals because the solubility of potassium chloride will decrease with the decrease in the 
टेम्परेचर ओके सो स्टूडेंट्स नाउ नंबर सी फाइंड द सोल्यूबिलिटी ऑफ ईच सॉल्ट एट 293 केल्विन व्हाट सॉल्ट हैज द हाईएस्ट सोल्यूबिलिटी एट दिस टेम्परेचर फाइंड द सोल्यूबिलिटी ऑफ ईच सॉल्ट एट 293 केल्विन यू हैव टू फाइंड द सोल्यूबिलिटी ऑफ ईच सॉल्ट दैट इज गिवन ओके व्हाट आर द सॉल्ट गिवन दैट इज पोटेशियम नाइट्रेट सोडियम क्लोराइड पोटेशियम क्लोराइड एंड एमोनियम क्लोराइड you have to find the solubility of each of the salt at temperature that is 293 kelvin what salt has the highest solubility at, at this temperature which salt will have the highest solubility solubility at this temperature okay so the answer of number 1 is solubility of potassium nitrate at 293 kelvin is 32 gram and how will you find the solubility in in question number a you have done yes or no when you have found out the the mass of the potassium nitrate in 50 g of water in the same way you will do the calculation that means the solubility of potassium nitrate it at 293 kelvin is 32 g Okay, number two, solubility of sodium chloride at two hundred and ninety-three Kelvin is thirty-six gram. Okay, number three, solubility of potassium chloride at two hundred and ninety-three Kelvin is thirty-five grams. And number four, solubility of ammonium chloride at two hundred and ninety-three Kelvin is thirty-seven gram. Okay. So now, which has the highest solubility at this temperature? Which has the highest solubility? That is ammonium chloride with thirty-seven gram. The solubility of ammonium chloride is highest at this temperature. Okay. Now, students, question number D. What is the effect of change of temperature on the solubility of a salt? The question is, what is the effect of change of temperature on the solubility of a salt? When a salt when a salt is soluble, what is the effect of change in the temperature? Okay, the answer is the solubility of salt increase with the increase in temperature. When you increase the temperature, the solubility of the salt increases, and when you decrease the temperature, the solubility of the salt decreases. Okay. Now, question number thirteen. Explain the following. Give. Explain the following. Giving example. You have to explain the following by giving example. A. Saturated solution. B. Pure substance. C. Colloid. And D suspension. Okay. So students, the answer is saturated solution. Okay. A saturated solution is a solution in which the maximum amount of solute has been dissolved at a given temperature. The solution cannot dissolve beyond that amount of solute at the room temperature. Any more solute added will settle down at the bottom of the container as a precipitate. It means that when you dissolve, so when you dissolve a in a solution, when you dissolve a solute in a solution at a given temperature, only that amount of solute will dissolve that can be dissolved at a given temperature. That means if you give, if there is a given temperature. only that amount of solute will dissolve in that solution if you add more solute in that solution it will settle down in the bottom of the solution as a precipitate that means no more solute will be dissolved okay that is a saturated solution in a saturated solution if you dissolve more solute at a given temperature that solute will not be dissolved later Okay if you add more that solute will not be dissolved later because it has a specific temperature given into which the solute can be dissolved 
if you add more that solute will settle down as a precipitate in the solution okay suppose 500 gram of a solvent can dissolve a maximum 150 gram of a particular solute at 40 degree celsius suppose 500 gram of solvent if you have taken 500 gram of solvent okay and, and in that solvent only a maximum amount of 150 gram of solute can be dissolved at given temperature that is 40 degree celsius that is given in 40 degree celsius only 150 gram of solute can be dissolved in 500 gram of solvent okay then the solution obtained by dissolving 150 gram of that solute in 500 gram of that solvent at 300 kelvin is said to be saturated at 300 kelvin okay only that amount of solute will dissolve in the given temperature no more solute if you add can be dissolved it will settle down as a precipitate it will be left over because that is the given temperature okay only specific amount of the solute can be dissolved at a given solvent or at a given specific temperature understood the rest if you add more it will not dissolve it will settle down as a precipitate as a residue understood residue and precipitate means the leftover part that cannot be dissolved more okay now students what is a pure substance a pure substance is a substance consisting of a single type of particles that is all constituent particles of the substance have the same chemical properties for example salt sugar water and pure substances i repeat what is a pure substance a pure substance is a substance consisting of a single type of particles it contains only a single type of particle okay that is all constituent particles of the substance have the same chemical properties that means the chemical properties of the constituents do not differ okay there is no difference in the chemical properties of a pure substance they are all same for example salt sugar water and all are pure substance okay then c that is colloid what is colloid a colloid is a heterogeneous mixture a colloid is a heterogeneous mixture the size of the solutes in this mixture is so small that they cannot be seen individually with the naked eye and the particles of the colloid the size of the colloid in this mixture okay the particles that is in the mixture of a colloid is so small that they cannot be seen individually with the naked eye you cannot see the particles of a colloid with the naked eye because they are very small okay and seem to be distributed uniformly throughout the mixture and they can be uniformly distributed throughout the mixture okay the solute particles do not settle down when the mixture is left undisturbed the solute particles do not settle down okay they do not settle down as a residue they mix up with the solution okay they mix up with the mixture okay this means that colloids are quite stable which means that the colloids are quite stable they are stable in nature colloids cannot be separated by the process of filtration and you cannot separate the colloids by the process of filtration they can be separated by centrifugation how can you separate the colloids by the method of centrifugation okay colloids show the Tyndall effect it also shows the Tyndall effect for example milk butter foam fog smoke cloud Tyndall effect means that means the light the light particles can pass through the colloids okay I repeat the answer again a colloid is a heterogeneous mixture the size of the solute in this mixture is so small that they cannot be seen individually with naked eyes and seem to be uh, and seem to be dis distributed uniformly throughout the mixture the solute particles do not settle down when the mixture is left undisturbed this means that colloids are quite stable colloids cannot be separated by the process of filtration 
They can be separated by centrifugation. Colloids show the Tyndall effect. For example, milk, butter, foam, fog, smoke, clouds. Okay, these are the examples of colloids. Now, students, what do you mean by suspension? What is suspension? Suspension are also heterogeneous mixture. Okay, suspension are heterogeneous mixture. The solute particles in this mixture remain suspended throughout the bulk of the medium. The particles can be seen with the naked eye. Suspension shows the Tyndall effect. The solute particles settle down when the mixture is left undis undisturbed. This means that suspension are unstable. Suspension can be separated by the method of filtration. For example, mixture of chalk powder and water with chlor and water. Now what is a suspension mixture? It is a heterogeneous mixture. That means the particles are of different types. Okay, in this mixture the particles of different types and these suspension the particles are larger in size and you and it can be seen with the naked eye. You can see the particles of the suspension. Okay, then these particles can be seen with the naked eye. And suspension show the Tyndall effect. That means the particles of the light can pass through this mixture. Okay. And the solute particles settle down. If it is left undis undisturbed, the particles of the suspension settles down. Okay. It does not get mixed up with the solution easily. The particles settles down. Okay. This means that the the particles of the suspension are unstable. Okay, the particles are unstable. Suspension can be and you can separate the mixture of the suspension by the method of filtration. By the method of filtration you can separate the mixture of suspension. And the example of suspension is chalk powder and water, wheat flour and water. Okay. Now question number 14. Classify each of the following as homogeneous or heterogeneous mixture. Classify each of the following as homogeneous or heterogeneous mixture. Soda water, wood, air, soil, vinegar, filter, tea. These are some mixtures and you have to classify them whether they are heterogeneous or homogeneous. So the answer is homogeneous mixture are Soda water, air and vinegar. Homogeneous mixture are soda water, air and vinegar. Okay. And heterogeneous mixture is wood, soil and filter tea. Heterogeneous mixture is wood, soil and filter tea. Okay. Question number 15. How would you confirm that a colorless liquid given to you is pure water. How will you confirm that a colorless liquid given to you is a pure water? When you are given a colorless liquid, how can you prove that it is a pure water? Okay, how can you confirm it? The answer is every, every liquid has a characteristic boiling point. Yes or no? Every liquid has a characteristic of boiling point and melting point. Yes or no? Then, pure water has a boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius, that is 373 Kelvin, at one atmospheric pressure. At one atmospheric pressure, the pure water has boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius, that is 373 Kelvin. If the given colorless liquid boils at even slightly above or below 100 degrees Celsius, then the liquid is not pure water. Okay, if a, if a colorless liquid is given to you and it starts boiling slightly above or below 100 degrees Celsius, then it is not in pure form. That means it is a not pure liquid, okay. It must boil at sharp 100 degrees Celsius. Pure water always boil at 100 degrees Celsius. Sharp 100 degrees Celsius. Okay. Thus by observing the boiling point we can
can confirm whether a given colorless liquid is pure or not. Understood? How will you confirm? Every, every liquid has its boiling point. Yes or no? And the boiling point of pure water is 100 degrees Celsius. That means 373 Kelvin at 1 atmospheric pressure. Don't forget the atmospheric pressure, okay? It is one atmo at 1 atmospheric pressure. The boiling point of pure water is 100 degrees Celsius. That is 373 Kelvin. And if it starts boiling, little bit like if it starts boil, if the liquid starts to boil even slightly above or below 100 degrees Celsius, then it is not pure. It is not pure water. Pure water always boils at, boils at sharp 100 degrees Celsius. Celsius. Okay, so this is how you can confirm whether the given colorless liquid is in pure form or not. Okay. So students, now question number 16. Which of the following materials fall into the, in the category of a pure substance? Which of the following materials fall in the category of a pure substance? Ice, milk, iron, Hydrochloric acid, calcium oxide, mercury, brick, wood, air. Which are the following materials that fall into the category of pure substances? Okay. The answer is the following materials that fall in the category of a pure substance are ice, iron, hydrochloric acid, calcium oxide and mercury. Okay, these are the following substance that fall in the category of a pure substance. That is ice, iron, hydrochloric acid, calcium oxide and mercury. Okay, now question number 17. Identify the solution among the following mixture. You have to identify the solution among the following mixture. And the mixture are A that is soil, B sea water, C air, D coal and E that is soda water. Okay. Students, the answer of number 16 is the following mixture are solution that is sea water, air and soda water. Sea water contains salt, air contains many different kind of gases. And soda water contains carbon dioxide and water. Okay, so these are the following mixtures. Okay, sea water, air and soda water. Now, question number 18. Which of the following will show the Tyndall effect? Which of the following will show the Tyndall effect? Salt solution, milk, copper sulfate solution, starch solution. Which of the following will show? Milk and starch solution will show the Tyndall effect. Why? Because milk and starch are colloids. And colloids and suspension always show the Tyndall effect. Because the light particles can pass through these solution. That is why these will show the Tyndall effect. Salt solution gets completely uniformly dissolved into the water. Copper sulfate solution also gets dissolved, okay, uniformly, but this milk and starch solution does not get dissolved uniformly. That is why they will show the Tyndall effect. So, milk and starch solution will show the Tyndall effect, okay. Students, now question number 19. Classify the following into elements, compounds and mixtures. You have to classify the following given substances into Elements, compounds and mixtures. Okay. So, what are the given components? They, those are sodium, soil, sugar solution, silver, calcium carbonate, tin, silicon, coal, air, soap, methane, carbon dioxide and blood. You have to, you have to separate these into elements, compounds and mixtures. Okay. 
elements. Elements are sodium, silver, tin and silicon. These are the elements. Okay. Sodium, silver, tin and silicon are the elements. Okay. Then what are the compounds? Compounds are calcium carbonate, methane and carbon dioxide because they, they are combined. Two elements are combined to form a compound. When two elements are combined, it forms a compound. That is why calcium carbonate, methane and carbon dioxide are compounds. Okay. Then mixtures. Mixtures are soil, sugar solution, coal, air, soap and blood. These are the mixtures. Okay. Now question number 20. Which of the following are chemical changes? Which of the following are chemical changes? Growth of a plant, rusting of iron, mixing of iron fillings and sand, cooking of food, digestion of food, freezing of water, burning of candle. Which of the following will show chemical change? Okay.
okay so these are the questions of this chapter in the next class i will give i will start with the next chapter okay so till then you please note these question answer down in your notebook and study well at home okay in the next class i will continue with the